So a new discovery in Antarctica. Researchers find new life under an ice shelf, and the discovery was an accident. The rings of the structure look like the walls of some sort of compound, like something that's been designed. The mysterious continent of Antarctica has long been a source of fascination for scientists and adventurers alike. With its icy expanse and harsh conditions, the continent has been shrouded in secrecy and intrigue for decades. But now, Russian scientists have returned from a groundbreaking expedition with some truly shocking discoveries that are sure to upend everything we thought we knew about this enigmatic land. But what did they find? Well, that's the million dollar question. According to reports, the Russian team uncovered evidence that suggests that many of the facts and quotes that we have taken for granted about Antarctica may not be true at all. But what does this mean for us? How will these new revelations change the way we think about Antarctica and the world as a whole? Watch till the end to find out and get ready to be astonished as we reveal Russia's groundbreaking discoveries that challenge everything we thought we knew about this enigmatic and mysterious land. Antarctica, the southernmost continent on Earth, is a place of mystery and wonder. It's the coldest, driest and windiest place on the planet, with an average temperature of minus 70 degrees Celsius and the potential to drop as low as minus 90 degrees Celsius. Despite its harsh environment, this massive ice-covered landmass is home to an incredible array of wildlife, including penguins, seals and whales. But the real intrigue lies beneath the ice. Antarctica is a vast and largely unexplored continent, with its geography and geology holding many secrets yet to be uncovered. If you think Antarctica has always been a barren, icy wasteland, think again. Antarctica was once a lush green forest teeming with life. Dinosaurs roamed its landscape, and even after their extinction it remained largely unfrozen for tens of millions of years. But all of that changed around 34 million years ago, when global temperatures plummeted leading to the formation of the vast ice sheets and glaciers that we see today. The reason for this sudden transformation remained a mystery until now. Scientists have been studying two theories, one focusing on global climate change and the other on ocean circulation patterns, and have combined them to reveal the truth. CO2 levels in the atmosphere steadily declined, and as they fell below a critical level, global temperatures dropped, leading to the formation of the Antarctic ice sheets. Additionally, the deepening of the Drake Passage, which connects South America to Antarctica, resulted in the formation of the powerful Antarctic Circumpolar Current, blocking warm waters from the North Atlantic and Central Pacific from reaching Antarctica, resulting in the isolation of the region and lower temperatures that allowed for ice sheets to form. Scientists have now linked the two leading theories on the continent's glaciation and believe that it is the best way to understand the phenomenon. The deepening of the Drake Passage caused a change in ocean circulation, directing warm waters northward in circulation patterns similar to those found in the Gulf Stream, which currently warms northwest Europe. This shift in ocean currents resulted in an increase in rainfall, which led to lower carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. As carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere fell, there was such a significant drop that ice sheets could form rapidly in Antarctica, causing it to experience glaciation. The process of silicate weathering, in which silica-bearing rocks are slowly worn away by rainfall, played a crucial role in this phenomenon. This new discovery gives us a better understanding of the history of our planet and the complex interplay between the Earth's systems. The theories of lost continents have been supported by fascinating discoveries, such as the remnants of previous continents found in Antarctica known as cratons. These findings provide insight into the breakup of the supercontinent Gondwana, and the connection of Antarctica to surrounding continents, which helps us better understand Earth's tectonics and the interactions between Antarctica's land and ice sheets. However, Antarctica is quite remote and covered in ice, making it difficult to explore geologically. Nonetheless, scientists use data from the GOCE satellite to map the planet's gravity field, allowing them to virtually remove the ice and focus on the bedrock below. This led to the discovery of evidence that Antarctica was once part of Gondwana, which broke up 180 million years ago. Moreover, the East Antarctic crust is thicker than the West Antarctic crust and is a mix of old cratons, including the Mawson Craton, which shares a fragment with Southern Australia. 
the latest findings have brought to light previously unknown complexities in East Antarctica's ancient cratons. The continent also contains origins, regions that are crumpled up due to ancient continents colliding to form mountains. In addition, a fascinating discovery was made in West Antarctica, a low-density area beneath Marie Bird Land, which may be due to an ancient mantle plume. Mantle plumes are hot blobs of rock that rise from the mantle and their presence can result in the formation of volcanoes. The researchers estimate that the Antarctic mantle plume dates back to the last 66 million years. Now, prepare to be amazed by the incredible magnetic anomaly that scientists recently stumbled upon beneath the icy surface of East Antarctica near Russia's research station. This anomaly occurs when the Earth's magnetic field is altered by significant amounts of magnetic materials. In the 1990s, researchers were drilling down in this area when they uncovered a hidden gem, Lake Vostok. Unfortunately, they had to stop before reaching the water to avoid contaminating the potentially pristine ecosystem. But that was just the beginning. Back in the 70s, Russia suspected they had built their base on top of a large subglacial lake. Orbital radar mapping and surface seismological measurements have since confirmed that Lake Vostok is not only the largest lake discovered in the past century, but it's also been isolated under two miles of solid ice for anywhere from 13,000 to 14 million years. This hidden wonder is roughly the size of Lake Ontario, but much deeper, with areas more than 3,000 feet deep and four times the volume. To top it off, the lake is still liquid and not frozen, with a temperature ranging from 10 to 18 degrees Celsius, indicating a subterranean heat source. The entire lake is covered by a sloping air dome several thousand feet high, formed by hot water melting the ice above the lake's surface, which is teeming with biological activity, as evidenced by microbes, nutrients and gases like methane. With all these incredible elements, the lake is considered an ideal testing ground for drilling through the ice and exploring the oceans of Jupiter's moon Europa. Hold on to your seats because this scientific discovery is a roller coaster of excitement. Initially, a mission to explore Lake Vostok in Antarctica was cancelled due to environmental concerns. But subsequent scans of the area revealed something even more puzzling. A team of scientists from the National Science Foundation swooped in to conduct an extraordinary series of low-altitude aerial surveys over the lake, using cutting-edge technology to map out gravitational, magnetic and thermal activity beneath the ice. And boy did they hit the jackpot! In the process, they stumbled upon a jaw-dropping find, a massive magnetic anomaly covering the entire southeast shore of the lake. The sheer size of the anomaly alone is mind-boggling. It has got scientists scratching their heads trying to figure out the source or reasons for its existence. One theory is that the Earth's crust near the lake is thinner under this area due to its formation, causing a local magnetic anomaly. Another possible explanation is that the anomaly could be caused by a buildup of metals. But until they can find concrete evidence, this incredible discovery remains an enigma. Furthermore, Antarctica's Taylor Glacier is home to a magnificent waterfall that has become the talk of the town. It was first discovered in 1911 by Australian geologist Griffith Taylor, but it wasn't until recently that scientists were able to uncover the truth behind the blood-red colour of this cascade. The water's crimson hue had initially been attributed to red algae, but it was eventually discovered that something else was responsible for the strange phenomenon. After using echolocation to investigate what lay beneath the glacier, researchers discovered that the waterfall is fed by a subglacial brine lake, rich in iron and hypersaline water. The water from the lake is under such high pressure that it is forced out through tiny openings in the ice, and when it comes into contact with oxygen, it turns red due to the oxidization of the iron. This stunning waterfall offers scientists a unique opportunity to study the microbial life of the region without having to drill deep into the Arctic ice sheet. The pool that feeds the waterfall was sealed off millions of years ago, and this has allowed ancient bacterial species to evolve in isolation. This discovery raises the possibility that there may be other subglacial lakes in Antarctica that harbour microbial life waiting to be discovered. Antarctica is believed to contain a lot of evidence of extraterrestrial objects, one of which is the Martian meteorite named Allen Hills 84001. This meteorite is unique as it allegedly bears signs of life on Mars. 
In 1996, scientists from NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston announced that they found microbial fossils in the meteorite. Allen Hills 84001 was discovered in December 1984 by a meteorite hunting expedition in Antarctica. The meteorite weighed approximately 1.93 kilograms and was shaped like a rounded bridge brick or a large potato, partially covered with black glass. The interior of the meteorite was initially green, which was unusual since the glass or fusion crust forms on all meteorites. However, the inside appears to be mostly grey back on Earth. Allen Hills 84001 is an igneous rock that formed about 4.5 billion years ago from molten lava, possibly from an ancient Martian volcano. This meteorite is similar to Diogenites, an important group of igneous meteorites and was classified as one of them until 1994 when researchers recognised its Martian origin. After crystallising and cooling about 4 billion years ago, Allen Hills 84001 was heated and deformed by a strong shock, possibly caused by a nearby asteroid or meteorite impact. Later, about 3.6 billion years ago, liquid flowed through the meteorite and deposited rounded globules of carbonate materials. These carbonate globules could potentially contain Martian fossils. The only other visible event in the meteorite's history is another shock event that could have happened when it was launched off Mars due to a meteorite impact. To escape Mars, ALH84001 must have been ejected from the planet's surface at a speed greater than Mars' escape velocity, which is approximately 5 km per second, or about 11,000 miles per hour. The meteorite impact is the sole recognised natural process that can transport rocks at such high velocities, with volcanoes being incapable of propelling rocks at comparable speeds. If a massive asteroid or meteorite hit Mars, Certain rocks on its surface could be expelled at speeds greater than the planet's escape velocity, resulting in their complete departure from the planet. Scientists have found additional proof that Antarctica has been struck by extraterrestrial objects, and the evidence this time is so vast that previous meteorite impacts pale in comparison. By using two satellites, the team of researchers discovered a crater that covered more than 450 kilometres and was buried under 1.5 kilometres of ice. They speculate that this impact might have caused the largest mass extinction in Earth's history, which occurred approximately 250 million years ago. According to scientists, the Wilkes Land impact had a catastrophic effect on the planet and its inhabitants, and almost all life was extinguished. The discovery was made by a joint mission aimed at measuring anomalies in Earth's gravitational field to show how mass is distributed on the planet and how it changes over time. Further study of collected data revealed evidence of the enormous crater. Some scientists suggest that a metallic M-class asteroid might be concealed in the depths of Antarctica near Wilkes Land. This colossal impact is thought to have generated an enormous quantity of dust, creating a hostile environment, months of darkness and caustic acid rain that transformed the planet into a living hell. Only a small number of prehistoric shellfish were able to survive the catastrophic event, which resulted in the extinction of most marine and land creatures, and ultimately led to the emergence of the dominant group of animals, dinosaurs, over the next 200 million years. The Permian Age, which ended around 250 million years ago, was brought to a bleak end by this event. Despite the fact that 80 to 90% of all marine and terrestrial life is believed to have died during that time, scientists still disagree about the cause of this mass extinction. While some scientists suspect meteorite impacts, others believe that volcanic activity accompanied by massive CO2 emissions caused the mass extinction. The Antarctic Impact Crater, located in East Antarctica, is approximately three times the size of the Chicxulub Crater in the Yucatan Peninsula, which was created by a meteorite impact about 65 million years ago and potentially caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. On the other hand, the meteorite that formed the massive scar on the Antarctic surface was several times larger than the dinosaur-killing meteorite, with an estimated diameter of over 45 kilometres. Antarctica is full of surprises, but this discovery might just send shivers down your spine. The Ross Ice Shelf, an area the size of Texas, is producing sounds that are straight out of a horror movie soundtrack. The vibrations caused by the wind whipping across the snow dunes make the ice vibrate, resulting in a haunting didgeridoo-like sound. 
While it may sound creepy, it is actually shedding new light on the study of glaciers. The implications of melting ice shelves on rising sea levels are a major concern, and scientists are eager to understand how this process works. Ice shelves act as a plug in a bottle, keeping a flow of ice from the interior of Antarctica to the ocean restrained. But as they melt, the restraining force weakens and more ice can flow out, exacerbating the rise in sea levels. The discovery of the singing ice shelf was made possible through the use of sensitive seismographs, which allowed scientists to study the glaciers in new and innovative ways. By placing the instruments at the top of the ice shelf, the researchers were able to collect data for two years and found that the Ross Ice Shelf sings at frequencies of five cycles or more almost continuously. This discovery not only offers an eerie soundtrack to the frozen continent, but also provides valuable insights into the mechanisms behind glacier melting and rising sea levels. Antarctica, the world's southernmost continent, is home to many mysteries that continue to fascinate scientists. However, not everything in this frozen land remains an enigma forever. Recently, researchers have uncovered the explanation for a massive phenomenon known as polynias, which are essentially large holes in sea ice. These holes are extremely useful for Antarctic animals such as seals, whales and penguins that swim beneath the ice and need to surface to breathe and rest. One specific polynia that has intrigued scientists is the Weddell Sea polynia, or the Weddell polynia. This particular polynia was first spotted in 1974 in early satellite images near an underwater mountain called Maud Rise. It was massive, approximately the size of New Zealand. Even though air temperatures in the area were well below freezing, the polynia reappeared in 1975 and 1976. However, it seemed to have vanished after 1976, leading scientists to believe that it was a long extinct process. To their surprise, the Waddell Polynia reappeared in 2016 in a slightly smaller size, about the size of the US state of Maine. It then reappeared again in 2017, and a study published at the time linked the 2017 Polynia to cyclone activity. But as with many global phenomena, there may be more than one cause, and this recent study shows that several factors need to align for a Polynia to form. Some of these factors could happen in any given year, but unless they all come together, a polynia won't occur. Fortunately, advancements in technology have allowed scientists to better understand this unique phenomenon. With access to a variety of data streams, including satellite images dating back decades and information from the Southern Ocean carbon and climate observations and modelling, researchers have been able to study the polynia and its causes more closely. The system of floating instruments drifts in the Southern Ocean, monitoring temperature, salinity and current to 2,000 metres and has been collecting data since 2014, providing valuable insights into this strange and captivating occurrence. Scientists have also been fitting Antarctic elephant seals with Argos systems, which include GPS, temperature and salinity sensors for many years. This has led to a third stream of data that has been collected. The recent formation of the Polynia was caused by a combination of various factors, including abnormal ocean conditions and a series of intense storms that brought hurricane-level winds over the Weddell Sea. The scientists found out that when a strong ocean winds approach the Antarctic coastline, they promote upward mixing in the Weddell Sea near Maud Rise, which causes dense seawater to swirl around itself, creating a vortex above. For many years, two floating instruments were trapped in this vortex. In the winter of 2016, when the seawater was particularly salty, it set off a circulation feedback loop in which warm water from below rose to the surface and was cooled by contact with the air, causing it to become denser and sink back down, while more warm water rose to take its place, resulting in a constant cycling that prevented sea ice formation. The researchers believe that this could have further climate implications due to the significant amount of carbon stored at the bottom of the Antarctic Ocean. Normally, this carbon is slowly circulated throughout the world's oceans, but if winter winds increase in strength and frequency as predicted by climate change, more polynias may be created, which could lead to more bottom water being circulated to the surface. This carbon, which has been locked away for hundreds of years, could be released into the atmosphere in a polynia through violent mixing, potentially causing a major impact on the climate system if it were to occur multiple years in a row. Think you know everything there is to know about the discovery of Antarctica? Think again. 
While most of us were taught that the frozen continent was first discovered in the early 19th century, an ancient map called the Piri Reis map tells a very different story. But this map is highly controversial and some authorities have gone to great lengths to suppress it. So what's the story behind this mysterious map? In 1929, a German theologian named Gustav Adolf Deismann stumbled upon a parchment in the Topkapi Palace Library in Istanbul. What he found was a map of what appeared to be South America drawn on a gazelle's skin parchment. This map, which became known as the Piri Reis map, was drawn and signed by Turkish cartographer Haji Ahmed Muhaddin Piri, or Piri Reis, in 1513. Piri Reis, who was both a cartographer and a member of the Turkish Navy, claimed to have used 20 different maps and charts as his sources. What's even more interesting is that eight of these maps were, were Ptolemaic, meaning they were based on the knowledge of the ancient Greek society from the second century. But this map on a piece of preserved gazelle skin is shaking up the world of cartography. Why, you ask? Well, for starters, this ancient artifact shows Antarctica almost 300 years before it was officially discovered. But that's not all. The map also reveals a landmass that existed before the icy cap of Antarctica formed some 6,000 years ago. Enter Professor Charles Hapgood of the University of New Hampshire, who in 1965 published a book called Maps of the Ancient Sea Kings. Hapgood and his students delved deep into the mysteries of the Piri Reis map discovering that it was drawn using the Mercator projection, a method not used by European cartographers until centuries after its creation. So how did this map end up showing Antarctica without its ice cap? And who could possibly have known about it over 4,000 years ago? Hapgood proposed that the map was based on information from an ancient civilization and cartographic skills that put our current technological capabilities to shame. And get this, Hapgood even suggested that this civilization may have had aerial capabilities, as the map's topographical accuracy from the coast was just too impressive to be explained by seafaring and cartographic abilities alone. Theories of lost cities, aliens and ancient super civilizations abound, and we want to hear from you. Which of these mind-boggling discoveries captured your attention the most? Share your thoughts in the comments below.